Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this afternoon's uh, session uh, where we are having a series, a talk by Mr. Zach uh, Siengo, who is the Head of Marketing and Corporate Affairs at uh, Rafiki Finance Bank. And he will be talking to us about taking mediation to the bank. Uh, sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon uh, once, more, once again. Uh, welcome to this uh, afternoon's uh, session where we are having Mr. Zach Siengo uh, talking to us about taking mediation uh, to the bank. Uh, we commence this afternoon's uh, session by being able to recite the words of the Kenyan national anthem in English. O oh God of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Uh, once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. Uh, our speaker this afternoon, uh, Mr. Zach uh, Siengo is the head of marketing at Rafiki Microfinance Bank. He has more than 15 years experience in marketing and communication strategy and business development. He holds a BSc Biomedical Science First Class Honours. Uh, he has an MBA from Strathmore Business School. Uh, he has a an executive MBA from the Pan-African uh, ISF Business School in Barcelona. He also has a postgraduate certificate in agribusiness from uh, Netherlands and a Camel Training Center in Israel. He is currently an MBA student at the Catholic University of Milan and a PhD finalist in entrepreneurship at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Uh, Mr. Siengo is passionate about creating opportunities for women and youth uh, for socioeconomic empowerment uh, through entrepreneurship. Uh, welcome, Mr. Siengo. Good afternoon. Uh, kindly unmute. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Siengo. Good to have you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to this forum. Um, just listening to your introduction, it's, it comes out like a, an academic uh, adrenaline junkie. <laughs> You know, like the way people drop from uh, the skies to to do sports, um, but that has to, that's a story for another day. I, I guess we will be able to engage on that on another day. Okay. Um, yeah, um, my much appreciation for allowing me to to speak to us today. Um, I don't know whether I can be allowed now. I'm not the host. I can be allowed to share my screen. Um, um, in just a moment, Mr. Siengo. Okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, I have that, that function. Can I share my screen? Um, uh Yes, in, in, in just a moment. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Siengo will be taking us through uh, this uh, particular session, which comes under the series Financial Industry Dispute uh, Resolution. Uh, we have been having the Financial Industry Dispute Resolution this month. Uh, so this particular series falls under that uh, category. Uh, today, the uh, 17th day of September 2020. Most welcome, Mr. Siengo. All right. Thank you. 
Okay. All right, uh, it's my pleasure to, to take us through this um, uh, presentation today. Um, generally, I, I believe that uh, by the end of this, uh, uh, th this forum today, you will have a, a better understanding of the sector, the way it is structured. Um, and besides that, you, you know, you in a better position to play your role in terms of resolution of matters within the industry. So as I would like to start by looking at um, the, the industry perspective. Um, you realize that there has been a lot of growth in this sector. Um, people say that uh, the, the, um, the products in the banks, they are quite conventional and uh, almost standard. So, a lot of times the, the competition is around uh, issues around customer service, how matters that arise from customers are resolved. And I guess that's, that's one of the responsibilities that you, you, ha you have to play a key role. Um, but generally we, we have um, 44 commercial banks. Uh, if you look at the industry, the way it is, there are two, you know, for, for banking sector, there are two regimes. There is one for under the Banking Act, and uh, and then there is what is under Microfinance Act, and both are regulated by Central Bank of Kenya. So uh, that's why we talk about 44, 44 commercial banks and 13 uh, microfinance banks. But then there is the wider financial sector, which is um, includes insurance industry, it includes uh, the sector subsector as well, um, where there is a separate. Um, regulatory environment that is that, that is led by SASRA and uh, that was as, as around 172 deposit taking circles that make means that they can take deposits from uh, their customers as well as advance loans and um, the market is also flooded with um, many credit only institutions that are not regulated by anyone it's just that you wake up one morning and you realize you want to to give loans to Kenyans because Kenyans like loans so um, you set up a company and um, using your own capital, you can be able to, to provide um, loan facilities. But then in that scenario, um, a credit only microfinance institution is not allowed to take deposits from the market. Um, so it's, it's, like I said, it's, um, it is, um, I would say it's, it's a large environment, which has commercial banks, it has microfinance banks, it has circles, both uh, um, uh, deposit taking and non-deposit taking. It has a credit only microfinance institutions, it has Shylocks, um, the likes of, of guys who you know, give loans and charge probably 20% uh, per month. Um, then obviously there are money transfer services, some regulated by central bank, others that, uh, okay, basically all of them under the, the, the framework of central bank of Kenya or under the telecom, telecom the communications authority watch. So there are all those um, money, trans, money transfer services, for example, we always talk about M-Pesa. Um, and then there, is, there are mortgage companies. Um, an example is um, housing finance, which is considered now as a bank. Um, and then Forex, uh, you realize also Forex bureaus are also under the CBK, um, Central Bank of Kenya reg regulation. Um, and just, it's, it's so, so this tells you it is a large, um, in my opinion, it's a large ecosystem that requires um, understanding of who plays which role. Um, because for, I believe for you to be um, an, an effective mediator, you must understand the, the, the environment, the way it is structured and, and see what are the major touch points. And part of my conversation today is to share with you the, um, the different touch points uh, between customers and the other stakeholders and find out where, where do we have some level of conflict and disputes and um, what is now our role. Um, and, and I would say your role as mediators to, to come in and, and provide solutions. Sorry. Um, yeah, and just just to take us back, um, 
we it's good to understand that um, Kenya is way ahead of most of the other, um, I would say most of the other um, uh, re environments, commercial environments. Um, and, and if you look at this is, this is really um, quite inspiring to see that um, since 19, uh, since 2006, there has been monitoring of um, um, what is happening in terms of financial inclusion. Actually, the driver has been on financial inclusion to understand uh, are more people in a position to, to open accounts, to have access to the formal financial system. Um, and, and we are, in Kenya, we are good at adopting new ways of doing things. And that's why I'm not, um, I'm not surprised if, I, you know, we, we could see going forward a lot of um, uh, commercial banks and even microfinance banks adopting um, mediation as a way of resolving matters. We are very good at adopting new ways of doing things, especially when there is a win-win situation. Uh, and you can see this uh, if you look at the, the, techie, the techie environment um, and see what has been happening in terms of um, adopting new ways of access to finance. And you can see digital lending, um, new ways of transferring money. You can see M-Pesa being a, you know, one of the largest, uh, not just in Kenya, but across, across the world. So that's why as you, if you look at the, 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 tab the, the tables I've shared here, um, in 2006, we had 83% um, of Kenyans were not within the formal financial system. Yeah. Um, in 2019, it is the exact opposite. So it's 2%, um, 0 0.9 of, of our population is now formally included within, within um, the formal financial system. When I say formal, I mean you can, there's somewhere where you're opening an account and someone is asking for your details and they, you know, either it's, it's through and, and including even, the, you know, the digital accounts that people 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 have and have been structured uh, through uh, a, a certain environment either by central bank of kenya or communication authority so um and if you compare that with um, i would say the most populous country in africa that's nigeria um by 2018 they were at 63 percent in fact their their goal is to 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 get towards 80 percent but i think by 20 by 2022 if i'm not wrong so as you can see, we are way ahead. And, um, and, and, and that tells you, as you're coming in to play a role in that, in that environment, you need to understand that it's a pretty advanced environment. And there's a lot of information. People are aware of their rights. Uh, they are aware of you know, what is happening. And, and they will always ask questions when something is not done right. Um, I, I thought of trying to list uh, who are the key players? Who are the people who are involved in this ecosystem? Um, and, and, and I believe that for a mediator, understanding the players and what are their interests, because everybody comes into this ecosystem with a certain interest for, 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 for themselves. Um, it is very important. It's, it's pretty a multi -stake, stakeholder ecosystem uh, with customers, lawyers, auctioneers, collectors, valuers, you hear about um, you know other people coming in as um, uh, to add value as um, the, the, the technology side of it uh, because every every financial institution, every bank, every microfinance bank, as what we call a, a core banking system that guides the, the product offering and, and how services are delivered to customers. So those are kind of the kind of things that it is very important to to understand them. Um, so if you allow me, I can go directly and start uh, a bit of that, that, this conversation. What are the, the areas of dispute that normally, and, and this is pretty more of my experience over the years uh, being in the industry. Um, one, is, it's on the credit side. Um, you will have customers coming in and, and complaining about um, uh, repayment disputes that arise uh, where a customer is unable to make their payments on time and then there's, there's that friction between themselves and, and the financial institution. Sometimes it could be because you know the customer is, is unable to make payments because of you know unforeseen circumstances or issues that are arising within their business or in some cases uh, having been a banker for these many years I know cases where we've got um, 
the you know deliberate reason someone decides not to pay but then that brings in some friction and it might end up in the wrong direction um these non-payments again could be uh, again existing from from not just um um, loan facilities, but, but also um, either some commitments that were agreed between the bank and, uh, and the institution. And I here I give an example of um, uh, where there's, there's, um, there's um, you know, trading with government and government institutions. Uh, they call it um, uh, procurement, procurement um, entities. And, um, and sometimes it's not just a, a loan facility, but rather it is a um, a commitment, uh, the, the person was, was given a bank guarantee and they were not able to execute the kind of work they were supposed to do. And then there's a financial commitment that they're supposed to do and they have not done it. Um, some other disputes could be around overcharging. Um, there's a, a contract, so it's, it's in, in the bank we call it an offer letter that was given and then it, it, there's an acceptance. By acceptance, it means you put your signature and sometimes because of pressure of, of um, uh, I need the money for business. A lot of people do not go through the nitty gritties and see what is what is put the conditions that are, are put there. So sometimes later they they go through the the offer letter and they're like, no, uh, these are not the things we agreed. But you know, there's a signature to it. Uh, that overcharging, the interest rates changes, and and stuff like that bring in also some sort of disputes. And um, you you know you'd you'd realize that um, currently there are uh, you know, a number of um, uh, ways of securing a loan facility. So it could be a, a real estate, um, or it could be uh, because of uh, you're using a logbook. So that already, because it's, it's um, on one side, the bank has given the money. The other side, there is um, uh, an, existing, um, um, an existing security that's been offered and it has been pledged to the bank that could, be an issue, an area of dispute, especially when there is a case of default, because then the bank comes back to say, uh, "We have joint ownership of this property." Then, because you're not, you're not, uh, you're not um, doing your, you know, you're not honoring your commitment. Then we need to to take away probably this this uh, this um, property, sell it, and and recover the loan. Now that process is pretty long and tedious, and it can be, it can bring a lot of issues. In fact, if you look at most of the disputes currently between banks and, uh, or I wouldn't say most, it could be a, a large percentage of disputes between banks and, um, and uh, uh, customers, they arise from this kind of process. So, and, uh, and then now you bring in, um, there's a whole list of people who play in this space. You will have repossessors, you will have auctioneers, you will have... Um, uh, you know, the storage, the guys who store these cars or probably if it's a car that has been uh, repossessed, you'll have the customer, you have a, another buyer who wants to buy the property which has been uh, auctioned, you'll have the lawyers, and, and, and every single touch point is an opportunity for a dispute. So take, for example, um, I buy um, a car that was repossessed from customer A by bank X. And um, during the transition process, um, the, you know, there is an, an issue with NTSA and I want, I want to, you know, complain. So you realize this particular dispute will have the buyer who was a pretty an independent person. It will have the bank, it will have the auctioneer who had to repossess the car, it will have the customer who owned the car previously. And it becomes a whole process that includes so many people. And managing all, those, all these stakeholders can, can always be an issue if it's not, it's not well done. Um, I just give you an example of um, today. If you 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 have land as as uh, as your security, uh, and you access a loan somewhere, and then there is default. So, upon a default, um, the bank is supposed to issue you with with um, a fourteen days notice. Yeah. Um, then. Um, yeah, you, when you're given a notice for 14 days, it's, 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 this is called a demand notice. It's to demand the sum of this much from you because you've not paid. And um, if you don't pay within 14 days, then the bank gives you what is required by law. It is called, again, a statutory notice, which is 90 days. Yeah, and, and after four, uh, the 90 days, uh, the bank is supposed to give you some more time, it's supposed to make it easy for you and entice you to come and pay back. 
So they're supposed to give you what is called a redemption notice. It's 40 days. And if the 40 days elapse, um, you've not paid, then the bank is supposed to come back to you and tell you, we now we are going to auction your property, you're going to do this, and, and then an auction notice is supposed to be given to you once the position has, has been done, and uh, it's, it's, it's called uh, the auctioneer's notice. And when it elapses, the day it elapses, and uh, then an advert is put in, into place, and then there is an advert not, notice, again, another 14 days. Now, if you look at this whole process, um, you're talking about almost six months of back and forth. And it can be even be longer where there is um, cases of um, a customer decides, we have already done the statutory notice, they've got to go to court and ob obtain a court, court injunction to, to slow down the process, probably to buy in more time. So that you would see um, a bank going through this kind of process for a particular client um, for many, many, many months. So ideally this gives you a reason why it is mediation has a, some space and then probably I'm, I'm preempting my my last conversation that there's a, there's a reason why mediation is important nobody wants to waste all that time nobody wants to waste and time is money anyway so nobody nobody wants to waste money as well um, and you've seen this um, I'm sure you've seen this in the papers uh, you know the, the case of uh, ASC Bishop uh, you know Lucy's bid uh, it was a long process and then the auctioneering. Uh, we also had a case of um, a leading um, 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 broadcast, or rather um, media personality also, you know, getting into a similar scenario. So this, this is happening all the time. Even as we speak, there's, there's a similar as a case happening somewhere. Um, and anybody, who, you know, a financial institution would want a scenario where first, Issues like this do not go to public domain. You know banks are very secretive. Why? Because they have a lot of information for customers and they wouldn't want their customers to be exposed. Um, and then on the other hand, they would want to save, save on time. So, I mean, this is it's really pretty a straightforward issue why mediation has a space and a place in the banking sector. Um, again, um, uh, in terms of accounts, you will have issues um, around, um, you know, uh, like I mentioned, banks have a lot of information for customers. They have a lot of customer information. They collect a lot, a lot of data. They know the next of kin. They know uh, your ID. They, they collect your history in terms of, you know, uh, for, and, and this is particularly where you have, um, um, where you have, let's say you've borrowed. There will, have, there will be a lot of information, including where you stay. So, we, we, we are very, and this is required by central bank. We share a lot of data with, with, with banks and financial institutions. And this data can be, there could be a breach of, of, of that data. It is shared in the wrong way. Um, so that could, could bring in a dispute. There could be issues around fraud as well. And fraud is two way. There are particular customers who would want to carry out fraud. Um, and, and, um, and that is, if it is intercepted at some point, it becomes an, a dispute between themselves at the bank and, of, of course, the government agencies. But also there are cases where you have your resources in the bank. And um, because of, um, you know, a, a breach of, of um, you know, security in terms of technology, then your money is lost. And then you claim back from the bank. Again, that arises issues around um, a dispute might arise from that point. But then there is uh, the issue of um, um, delayed instructions. Um, and, and this I'm looking at, um, let's say, for example, you've issued instructions for a certain check to be, you know, to be deposited and it goes, and then somebody doesn't deposit that check at the right time. Or let's, let's look at it from, you issue in your instructions through RTGS, which is supposed to be real time. But then the, the staff who is supposed to execute those, those um, uh, instructions doesn't do that in real time. Now, what it means is you incur losses on the other end. Uh, one, because there could be financial losses because let's say you're paying for some cars to be imported from Japan and that payment doesn't go in good time. That means there's a delay in terms of your processes, but also there's an issue of trust. You might lose businesses because of trust because you didn't pay the other party in good time. So ideally that, that has been an issue. Or think about you, you, you went for um, um, you know, some, some transactions that you're doing and uh, you needed that payment to be exactly at a particular time. 
and, and that doesn't happen. So that basically is can be a big, big issue and we've seen those kind of disputes happening in the bank. Um, and then we've got um, also issues around um, alternate channels and here I want to look at um, probably, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned about money transfer services, the likes of Lipa and M-Pesa, uh, M-Pesa itself, both retail and, and, um, and uh, commercial. Excuse me. Or other money transfer services, MoneyGram, West, Western Union, and the rest that are upcoming. Uh, those are also areas where we could have issues because whatever was supposed to be done or payments that were supposed to be done at a particular time. Let's say, for example, I deposit money using M-Pesa and it doesn't hit my account at the particular time when it was supposed to be in the account. And I was making a payment based on a check that was, a, you, you, that was given to another customer elsewhere. That delay could be an issue that brings in a bit of, uh, a bit of disputes. And that all the touch points from mobile banking, you know, use of cards, internet banking, that are supposed to provide opportunities for customers to either deposit money or, um, uh, or um, uh, withdraw money from their accounts. If that is, doesn't happen in good time, it could be a, a source of dispute. Um, the other issues could be, um, um, uh, you know, other issues around the same matter I've just mentioned about the breach of uh, customer data uh, on, this, on this level or fraud. But I would like to explain a little bit more about the delayed service. Um, think about if you went for shopping somewhere um, and then you, you have this, this, this tray of uh, goods, many of them, and, um, and then you went to, to the cashier and your card doesn't work. I have a particular, particular case of one of my, my friends who went to shop in a, I wouldn't mention the town, but he went to shop somewhere and then he, he was with the wife and children. And then, you know, when men are around their, their, their family, they're like kings and, um, and kings and, and, and lions. And um, so he, he had this, this um, you know, this, this uh, tray full of all the goods he was shopping for that day. But then when he went, to, he went to the cashier, the card was not working. And that particular supermarket is a very small supermarket. So they told him to, to take back all the goods where he had collected them uh, one by one, shelf by shelf. And it was uh, quite humiliating. And we've got um, uh, many cases of um, you know, such kind of disputes coming, coming in. I, I don't know, maybe you might not remember, there is a time uh, Justice, um, Justice uh, GBM Karaoke sued um, uh, Standard Chartered Bank because he said uh, he was paying a uh, DT Dobby for for a car and the ch the checks didn't go did go through at the right time delayed service. Uh, we had also a similar instance of um, um, Sen Meru Senator uh, um, uh, Linturi also suing a um, cooperative bank because his car didn't work in good time. And and all those instances are examples of either delayed service or probably denial of service, and, and somebody goes to goes to, um, to 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 either to the courts to 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 take these matters to the court for resolution and demanding some sort of compensation. Um, this is how I see it when it, when when I look at conflict resolution, and and, and I am not a, a legal person, so I might not be very. Um, articulate when it comes to matters of uh, co conflict resolution. But in my understanding within the banking sector, there is the issue of uh, arbitration. And arbitration is really, really taking root in Kenya now, where you have, um, um, let's say, a legal person or an arbitrator who has been trained and, and comes in to, to listen to the both parties that are in dispute, but provides a, a verdict. You know, it's the, they come out straightforward to say, this is the verdict, this is the match that you're supposed to pay. Um, obviously, there is the issue of litigation that is happening and almost all the matters that are not resolved between customers and, and, um, and the bank might end up within the court. And we know about the court issues and, and how long it takes to sort out of some of those matters. Um, a mediation um, where you have We've introduced a, a party who is unbiased, um, who is unbiased, and is willing to listen and is willing to provide a solution, and that's that's happening. Um, and I just, just want to 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 give you an example of some of the um, recent um, um, findings. Um, the World Bank estimates that um, 
uh, almost 170 economies. And I would, in this case, I, I believe it's mostly the developed economies across the world have been using mediation for more, for, for more than 40 years. That's, that's, that's to tell you that um, even here in Kenya, we have bits here and there where there, is, there are particular instances where med mediation is taking place and giving um, um, a solution to matters that have been raised. Um, and we've got examples um, in the US where there is um, a, a bit of, I would say it's a bit advanced, where claims that would have taken longer um, as a, an example of a claim that would, had taken 13 years, one day people decide to come and sit with the, with the, with the, with the Wells Fargo, the bank, because it was arising from their president and agree that um, it is important to sort out this matter without prolonging it anymore. And then that matter is settled within a sh very short time. So in terms of, you look at the international perspective, what is happening across the world, that mediation, is, has taken root in most of the economies. Question is, how much is happening here in Kenya? And um, the, the, the Kenya Bankers Association, and as well as Uganda Bankers Association has, has similar initiatives. They've started similar initiatives, and a bit of this is to encourage um, um, more uh, cases, disputes, and, and disagreements and conflicts to be taken through the process of mediation because it's obviously there are good reasons. And um, well, like I mentioned, if you, the, the, basic, the basic reason why we are, we are talking about um, um, mediation, in my opinion, and, and especially when it comes to the banking sector is, you know, you're looking at reducing costs because costs related to litigation are very high. You have to pay the lawyers, it takes a time. Um, and also, you, you know, it takes a number of resources to manage all these kind of issues. Um, so again, we're talking about saving time. Um, I would like to say that the banking sector is a very guarded environment. And I guess this is one of the key issues that uh, someone who wants to participate within this environment uh, has, has to understand. It's a very guarded environment. Uh, it's a lot of secrecy because you're talking about a lot of customer data. Um, so information going out is a big issue. So customer confidentiality is, is very key. Um, and and, um, and, and for me, I mean, when I look at uh, reduced cost and saving on time, I remember the issue I shared with you about how long it takes to, to settle a matter where there is non-payment of a loan facility that was uh, offered um, and the security was a piece of land. And then you have to go through the whole process of almost, um, you're talking about more than six months of trying to settle that matter. Um, so the question is, is there an opportunity for mediation in the banking sector in Kenya? And mine is a very straightforward to say yes. One, because, the, I mean, remember that case of um, Justice GBM Karaoke. Actually, the bank proposed to have the matter settled out of court, and this is happening so many times. In my opinion, um, it, it's just that a lot of this ends up in, in, the, in the hands of uh, lawyers who are arbitrators. So again, like we said, uh, the lawyer comes in almost like a judge because he's, he's, you know, he's looking at the two scenarios um, and providing a, a middle ground, providing a, saying this is what we should do. Uh, so there's, there's a big space for uh, mediation, uh, in my opinion. Um, and what, what is required is that one has to understand the industry, know what the players, know the, the regulations around it and understanding. And people say, uh, it's, I, I, I don't think it's that this is really my opinion, but a lot of people say there is, there is either over-regulation or strict reg regulation within the banking sector. But in my opinion, this is meant to guard the... Um, the resources of the people and the data from the people. And these are very key things. If you look at the, where, where the world is going into um, data and, and data management, it's a big issue. So understanding that, understanding the players and knowing, understanding the, the regulatory environment, the framework is very important. And like I mentioned, banking, banking is unique. You're guarding resources, people's resources and people's data. So, there's a lot of confidentiality issue that has to be protected. And again, I mean, if you look at um, also the, the, the laws of the land, there is the Consumer Protection Act, which is very strict. And recently we launched the data 
Protection Act, which is, which is I, I think they go, they, they're in the process of getting a commissioner for it. And this is again to guard uh, data from customers and, 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 and protect the customer. So understanding that environment is very important. And uh, I believe that again, also looking at uh, creating a win-win situation um, is, is, should be the key. This is the kind of solution. So I'm thinking if you're a mediator and you're approaching a bank to be a service provider, these are the, some of the things you need to know. Obviously, you will need um, some level of certification. Uh, could be by, I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't know the exact um, uh, certification that exists, either locally or, locally or internationally. But that certification, understanding the environment, um, obviously, you would be willing to sign a number of NDAs. So because banks would want you to commit that uh, you're providing immunity in terms of the kind of data and kind, kind of information um, that, that is going out. Remember, um, the fact that a bank is, is, is protecting or rather it's keeping resources for people, is, is, it's actually a steward for people's resources. So they do not want to come out in the light of um, the breach on the data of a particular customer because what that means is all the other customers will look at, will, will have a perception that my data or probably even my money is not safe. So that's why it's, I would say it's a very guarded environment. And as such, um, coming in as a mediator would, would require understanding this kind of, um, uh, this kind of eco ecosystem and respond to it appropriately. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's it for me for now. Um, I would like to request if there are any questions and, uh, and, and here, um, maybe I might have not shared some information on any particular matter I'm willing to assist now. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Siengo, for being able to help us understand uh, how the bank works and some of the things that we need to be able to think about as uh, mediators. Um, just before we go into the uh, question and answer session, I will invite uh, Rashid, young mediator Rashid, to be able to give uh, a commentary. Young mediator Rashid. Yes, yes, Sarah, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, we can hear you. Please proceed with the commentary. Okay. First and foremost, thank you, Mr. Zach, for that wonderful presentation. We really learned a lot. I, I'm really enthusiastic yes. about venturing into mediation yes. in the financial sector. So it is often a much quicker process to get to mediation with uh, with the banks, as you have said. So during during uh, my understanding, during my, my learning in, in back in, in the mediation training, I usually used to ask myself whether do these financial institutions have a framework of solving disputes out of court? I always wondered whether there were alternative dispute resolution mechanisms that were being used to solve these disputes because as, as far as I knew, it was all matters were to be litigated and taken to court. So I, I had my own curiosity, but today I can now say, thanks to Mr. Zak, I've been able to understand how we as mediators can take advantage of the situations that the banks go through and also for, for, for the better, for the, for the, for the betterment of access to justice uh, to encourage mediators to venture into the banking or rather the financial industries dispute resolution. So in my view, those in the banking and the finance sector should seriously consider opting for mediation as opposed to other forms of dispute res resolution, maybe for, sev for several reasons. First, I can say, Mediation is not a combative procedure, such that a deal is more likely to be achieved. So for that, I, I feel mediation is appropriate for us and it is the appropriate dispute resolution mechanism. Again, mediation does not lead to a decision by the mediator. 
it, it helps the parties come up with their own decision, which then helps to resolve the, the dispute amicably, <clears throat> which is a very wonderful thing to see, especially when the dispute is about money. People have uh, uh, serious issues with, uh, with their money and they would not like uh, a dispute getting uh, so serious that one party has to lose because in in, in other forms of the, of of, uh, of dispute resolution there are high there are high chances that one is going to lose and they won't know who is, is going to lose until when the dispute is resolved which is uh, very detriment, detrimental to the financial capacity of the party and also for the for the relationship it's usually very tainted um, what else I can say is the chances of an outcome in mediation are, are very swift. Or rather, cases that we do through mediation are usually expedited and uh, parties are likely to get justice within a, a, a good time. So that, mm -hmm. is, that is very reasonable and they are able to come up with a, a resolution that is going to help them to to finalize their, their, their mis misunderstanding. So what I can say generally is uh, we have learned a lot of things regarding our approach as mediators to the banking sector. I'm going, personally, I'm going to, to, to take serious, uh, a serious uh, perspective to what we have been taught today by Mr. Zach and also come up with uh, an, uh, an appropriate form of uh, approaching these uh, lending institutions. I hope, Mr. Zak, you are going. You are going to explain to us what is the uh, the exact or rather the appropriate office to approach when you are, when you are visiting these uh, banking institutions to 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 offer ourselves as uh, uh, service providers in the okay. in the this, yeah in the in the banking sector because. Usually, you might, you might see a mediator, they really want to do something or rather to get work from these financial institutions or maybe some corporate body, but they don't know who, who to, where to start. You see, there is a, an, a managing director, there is a, a department of human resource or rather a human resource officer, there is a legal, a, a, a legal officer. So... My question would be, where do we start as as a, as, a, as conflict resolution resolution experts when we are approaching in the financial industry? Okay. Then, uh, yeah, I I have a few questions, but I think I can I can table them at the end. Uh, perhaps I can I can. Okay, Sarah, back to you, Sarah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, young mediator Rashid, for the commentary that you have been able to uh, give us, uh, helping us understand the role that mediation can play uh, in the banking uh, sector. Uh, young mediator Rashid has asked one question. I will uh, suggest, uh, mediator Rashid, that uh, you add uh, another one, another two questions to Mr. Siengo and then he can uh, be able to take those uh, together. Uh, Medi Young Medita Rashid, you have asked about uh, who to approach. You can ask another two questions and then Mr. Siengo will be able to take those together. All right, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Sarah. My question will be, what ADR, my question was was going to be what what ADR mechanism is most preferred by fin the financing institutions? Yeah, that will be my first question. Uh, however, as you are as Mr. Zach was presenting, I have seen that there is, uh, through the the Kenyan Bank Bankers Association and the Ugandan Bar Bankers Association, they prefer mediation to be an appropriate uh, form of uh, ADR or other alternative dispute resolution mechanism. So I feel like my question is is answered. And my other question would be: These uh, commercial disputes, we understand that they can take up to four years or maybe more to be resolved in litigation. My question was: What is the impact of this delay on banks? 
financially, maybe outside outside there in the in the image of the banks, how is it affected? And at what stage do these banks choose ADR? At what stage do they realize, or rather, when when do they move the court, or when do they move for to seek redress? When is it at the beginning when the dispute arises, or do they have to wait until the the there's the default of 14 days, and then through the notices up to the 14th day? up to the, the last advert or rather the notice that is on the advert to to auction. Okay. My final question will be, would you say mediation is globally accepted or is there still a, a long way to go? Thank you for those questions, Sarah, and back to you. Uh, uh, thank you, Rashid. Uh, Mr. Siengo, uh, please take the questions. Okay, okay. So, um, well, the first question was on um, uh, who should, um, if you're approaching the bank uh, to serve in the panel, who should you approach? And um, in this scenario, it will be the legal team because the legal team handles um, um, any matters that have not been sorted out at the customer, um, customer uh, bank official level. They are referred to the legal team to to, to, to handle them. I mean, I know scenarios where, and I know a particular instance where there was a, a bank that used an image of a customer and, um, and the customer, you know, went to court to, to get um, some form of compensation and, um, and the matter didn't go to, you know, the, the direction of uh, the courtway. The bank uh, resolved to have it sorted out through, um, in this case, arbitration. So if you want to, 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 you know, to, to be in the panel of uh, dispute resolution within the banking sector, you will, you will need to prepare, like, let's say, a profile. I, I've been working with entrepreneurs for many years, so I, one of the things I understand is if you have to package yourself. Uh, you have a profile, um, uh, probably even show a small case that you did elsewhere, um, and, and the right paperwork. If it's, uh, like I mentioned about certification, you have the right certification. Um, and back it up with, with partners. Who are the partners within? Uh, I would say if you sometimes going it alone doesn't give you a lot of value, as as opposed to if you it's a partnership between let's say two mediators who who, who form the um, um, an organization and there is a managing partner, is a deputy managing partner, and who are the other people working in that organization? Um, I might not speak um, on behalf of KBA in terms of whether KBA is uh, considering, ad, you know, adopting um, mediation as, 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 uh, as a way of sorting, uh, sorting out issues, uh, conflicts, but as it is, they will actually launch that initiative. They launched the initiative. And Uganda Bank Association, who are our neighbors and our biggest trading partners, they have also done the same thing. So there is that encouragement towards, uh, you know, uh, solving matters through um, alternative um, um, dispute resolution. Um, what, what I know, and this is a fact, a lot of these have gone to arbitration and uh, it's, you would realize a lot of legal firms have also registered on the side um, as part of their services, they are doing uh, arbitration. So for, for now, what I'm looking at is where is, how can we package mediation as the way to go um, and provide, uh, because I mean, the legal firms will not always offer the, you know, the, they will not always sort out all the matters. What you're looking at is uh, you, you're reducing that time, you're reducing the, the issues around cost, and you're providing an alterna you know, alternative that, is, um, that can be considered by the bank. So that, that packaging issue is a major issue for banks. Um, you also asked about, um, uh, I think I've answered the issue about uh, ADR mechanisms and what is being preferred. I have given a, a brief of, you know, it's, it's more of a competition between arbitration and mediation. Um, you also asked about uh, when there is a delay of that kind of process, uh, let's say a process of, um, let's say it, it was a piece of land that was being uh, realized to cover a loan facility that was not paid. Uh, what happens? So I would be very candid with you and tell you, yes, there's a huge cost that takes place because 
when you involve um, auctioneers, it is a cost to the customer. When you bring in, um, and an auctioneer comes in with a value, to value the land at this particular point. Uh, you bring in, if it's a, a logbook, and so you've, um, there's a car that has been repossessed, it is taken to a garage, uh, a storage uh, facility for some time before it is advertised. And that, they, they, there is a cost to it. Um, and then you bring in a value again to value that car at that moment, does it still provide the value that is required? And sometimes it's a, it's a bad scenario because even when the car is sold, the customer has lost the car, um, but the car doesn't fetch the value that the bank was looking for. So it's a loss to everyone. So what, what, here what, what we are saying is there is need for mediation. Uh, and of course there is reputational issues when you have uh, you know, a case um, between the bank and a customer, you know, being in the mainstream media and the new media, social media, it's, it's nobody wants that kind of reputation taking place. And for me, I think it's an issue of awareness. We, you, sometimes we are not aware of some of these opportunities that exist. I was part of one particular case where, um, um, a, you know, um, a customer who, uh, of a, a particular bank um, in Kenya, who is also one of my friends at a loan facility that was not being paid. Um, and, um, you know, the issue was the bank was going the way of taking him to, through the court process and realizing the property that he had. But he, his, his thoughts were, can there be a discussion? So I, I am actually thinking I'm already a mediator. I, I, should, I, should, I, should be, I should be looking for the certificate already because in that instance, when I have, well, because of my experience in banking, um, I sat in the discussion where the customer was talking to the bank officials on the other end. And, um, and I told them I work in a bank and why not you know, look at a scenario where this, this customer of mine, who is my friend, uh, brings in a certain sum of money and then the bank is, is able to provide some, some, um, some waiver on some of the costs, some of the interest, penal interest that was charged. And the bank, when the bank looked at the value of um, uh, the money that the, the customer was bringing in, because he was clear, clearing the principal amount of the loan and paying part of the interest that has that had accrued, they accepted his offer and declared his loan facility. So um, I think, in my opinion, it's more of awareness. And like we've mentioned, uh, uh, to respond to Rashid's que last question on, uh, on the global perspective, it's happening across the world. World Bank says, 170 economies, developed economies, and well, and some of the developing economies that appreciate mediation. And um, for the last 40 years, if you look at um, the scenarios, in particular in the UK, and uh, well, I would look at UK and Japan, mediation has been happening in the banking sector. The US, the same thing, mediation has been happening. So it's more of, we need to create that awareness, create a profile, create a space for mediation in the banking sector, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's taken up immediately. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Siengo. Um, we'll just have some uh, comments uh, from uh, Wangari, uh, the convener, before we will be able to uh, have some more questions for you. Uh, Wangari? Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and also good afternoon, Zach. And uh, I am delighted to be able to uh, see uh, Mr. Siengo, uh, especially after he did accept the invitation following uh, just uh, uh, the discussions with our uh, one of our advisors. And uh, this is a very big discussion for us, um, um, uh, Zach. And I, I, I really am not very sure we even yet um, appreciate, um, if I will call it the value of the discussion that you have um, given us today. Allow me to point out that um, last year we had uh, the opportunity to invite uh, Mr. Nelson Kuria, who uh, mm -hmm. was a long-standing uh, uh, director at uh, the CIC, CIC, at uh, yeah, CIC yeah. the insurance company. 
and also uh, I mean a very long time uh, so a very, very long time more veteran in the financial industry in general and uh, we invited him in just a discussion to, um, as, as the one we are having with you and really what we just asked him is please help us to understand the financial industry uh, the financial industry uh, in Kenya please help us to understand it internationally because um, he has also sat in uh, uh, Africa-wide and also um, international uh, financial industry-related uh, body. And when we had that meeting with him, it was very clear that um, in its totality, the financial industry, which also includes investments, insurance, banking, and even some elements of real estate today, considering the way uh, some organizations are structuring themselves, it's actually an area that mediators will not just go and doors are open for you. It is an area whereby mediators will go in with a strategy. So on the call today, we have a number of the colleagues who are part of, um, of the financial industry district resolution uh, strategy. Uh, as you have said, knocking doors one by one into banks. Um, I go knock one, Sarah goes knocks another one, Rashid knocks into another one. It may not be the most effective way for us to be able to tap into ourselves. Mediators come also from diverse professions. We come from professions, we are farmers, we are teachers, we are lawyers, we are bankers, we are economists, we are engineers, we are doctors, and we opt to add on to our career lines the certification to become um, a professional mediator. So that means that uh, the discussion with, uh, that we have been able to have with, uh, with you then enables us to be able to get into the psyche of a banker, then we can be able to now provide value even as we make our proposals into uh, different institutions. Um, I recall a discussion we had um, um, earlier in, uh, in, in the year at our symposium day with um, uh, Madame Rose Sang, who is a human resource professional. And, um, this um, uh, mainly comes in because we uh, have the Thrive Commercial Dispute Resolution as a service for uh, the business sector. And part of the statement from uh, Madame Rose Sang was that we need to be able to make what I could call business sense. So if we go into, let's say, oh, we're speaking now to a bank, we would be saying that we provide this value to you. Mm. The value we provide mm. to you, yes, includes public relations. Then financially, and I mean, Asha Rose was actually very categorical because the discussion we we're having at that time with her as a um, human resource executive was uh, how do we approach um, chief executive officers and CFOs and boards? Because um, Thrive, the commercial dispute resolution service, is actually a service we have designed for um, chief executive officers and CFOs and value-driven boards. So she was very categorical, um, Madame Rose Sang, saying that as a HR professional who interacts with executives and I do, uh, she does recruitment, uh, then it means you are moving in as a service provider. And as a service provider, what the institution is looking for is then what value are you providing to them? So I think that this discussion with yourself is not yet complete. And I really, really am grateful mm -hmm. that um, yeah, Rafiki, um, <laughs> Uh, microfinance bank just probably as you as you say you are a relationship bank you did open that uh, moanya that penya mm -hmm. um, or you open that the door because we also have not yet been able to um, quantify our value so that we uh, can be able to now stick into that element um, of the executive at um, the financial institution so we see that this is just the beginning of a good conversation. I once again really thank you for um, opening the door. Uh, we have been aware that the Kenya Bankers Association, um, um, and, 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 and actually this, uh, I have been serving in uh, uh, just about uh, just over five years now. And when I got my certification at that time, we, we were informed that the Kenya Bankers Association is actually developing uh, mediation within the banking sector, but we have not been able to receive um, what I'll call um, information that enables us to know, you know, where, where do you start, where do you move on, and that, that is, um, uh, that is um, the current situation that we have as, um, let me say, like the, the, the mediators. But we are delighted to understand that 
uh, the banking sector or banks make use of mediation, even if it is done by internally or it is done with external. And I think that is the place that um, our team that is in the financial industry dispute resolution strategy team, these are some of the learnings and also some of the discoveries that now we will be able to go and pekua, you know, go and now as you're checking around or asking around, then you can be very clear. We do find that uh, the role that mediators could serve within the financial industry is sitting in an area that is called customer service. You know, when someone has mm -hmm. an issue with a bank, yeah. Uh, yeah. or even if it's um, yeah, like an insurance company, then you're sent to uh, oh yeah, customer service, and then now customer service tries to work around with you. Then yeah. really, unless there are very serious issues, and now it goes escalating, escalating until it gets probably to the executive, um, the, the chief executive officer, or it goes now to the head of um, operations, and they see if they can resolve it. And if the situation is, if the case then has uh, legal, uh, legal, but legal, uh, legal, then now that's when you find that litigation seems and still is like the way to run into. Um, what majorly concerns uh, what uh, we have as part of our team uh, of transformative mediators is that the distress from this financial relationship is extremely heavy and it must also be heavy not just to the uh, business people who are impacted or families that are impacted but it must also be very heavy to the bank person who has to execute it when you have to deal with auctioneers uh, just as you have said it is Hardly do you find it as a uh, very welcoming. I mean, hardly have you, have you a situation whereby you find an auctioneer who's open for the door. Please come and take the chairs in the house. Please come and take the jiko. Please come and take this and then, you know, go and uh, use that, sell that so that you can be able to, uh, to enable me to pay the loan. Right now, we are sitting in a very unique time because of COVID and uh, the Thrive Commercial District Resolution is also um, a, a response to be able to uh, uh, support, uh, especially the small, medium enterprises um, as part of the Kenya COVID-19 Mediation Initiative. And I think it would be an exciting time to be able to journey together and see how best we can be able to support, especially um, SMEs, which as I've said, mediators are in many professions. We sit chicken, we sell, we have shops we, we, we are, that uh, we are running, uh, we have uh, kiosks, kidukas. And so some of these situations and many of them are not things we have not experienced. So Zach, I would really like to thank you for spending this time with us. Um, mm -hmm. I know that mediator Sarah has um, a couple of questions which came in from the colleagues um, uh, earlier in the call and uh, she will be running uh, through those questions um, uh, with, with, uh, with you. And once again, I thank you because uh, following your uh, session uh, with our advisor, um, Alex, we really yes. have had a very good uh, uh, discussion right now. And you know that it's just the beginning of a yes. great relationship ahead. So thank you very much, Mark and Sarah. I thank you for uh, moderating us. Um, Young Mediator Rashid, thank you also for your comments. Colleagues on the call, I greet you. God bless you. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Bangari, uh, for your comment and uh, insight. Uh, Mr. Siengo, we do have uh, some more questions. Okay. And uh, I think we will just pick up from, uh, you know, speaking to you, uh, you appear to, uh, not just appear, but you actually are very much knowledgeable about mediation and the role that uh, it, it plays. Uh, my question, which I'm wondering, is about your colleagues at the bank. Do they actually need more sensitization in form, uh, concerning ADR and in particular concerning uh, mediation? Because it, it appears arbitration is fairly well understood within the banking system. So is more sensitization required? And then if this sensitization is to be done concerning mediation, then what, what do you propose would work uh, to be able to reach out to, to bankers so as to be able to uh, increase that awareness amongst the, the banking uh, fraternity? 
Uh, the, the other question that ties in uh, together with that, uh, you know, apart from perhaps sensitization, do you think there would be any other interventions that would be required for the bankers and the banking system to be able to appreciate mediation a lot more than they actually do? So uh, perhaps you could just share with us your thoughts uh, concerning yeah. those three questions, and then yeah. we will be able to look at some more. Okay. Uh, so the first issue is, um, well, I, if that is if I was to sit in, the, in that uh, financial sector mediation strategy committee, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, some of the things I'll look at is, um, you know, like I said, if, if today, Sarah, you approach bank X and uh, someone else approach bank Y um, without first uh, preparing the ground, it might be a tricky situation. And, and for me, I would, uh, one of the things I would want to approach this is um, um, through the Kenya Bankers Association or uh, the Association of Microfinance Institutions, because that's also an, another umbrella body that uh, brings together all the, 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 you know, the players within that industry. Uh, both AMFI and uh, KBA are very vocal in terms of um, what is happening in, in, the, in the banking sector. So it would be nice to, you know, to think about how as, a, as an organization you can approach them to discuss a partnership because that partnership is likely to bring in one of the issues you've raised, sensitization within the banking sector. Think about a, a scenario where you decided to, to have a training for the legal and the, the, legal, the head of legal for different institutions plus uh, the head of customer service in one sitting and take them through uh, you know, mediation, the role it, 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 it plays in, in saving that time, saving that cost. It's likely that you will actually have handled the issue of sensitization in one stroke. So um, for me, and, and I'm just going back to the question of how to approach it, uh, working through KBA and AMFI would be a big solution. But the other thing is, um, even as you approach these guys, you need to provide value. Uh, let, let me give you an example. Um, a collector, the guys we, we, outside, we call them uh, the auctioneers, approach the bank and says, you have a loan facility that is 10 million. It's not being paid. Plus um, the interest is 1.2 million. I am going to get you the 1.2 million uh, back to you. Uh, so you'll have your principal amount, you'll have your interest with you, but then you'll give me 10%. So the bank looks at it and says, um, instead of losing 1.2 million, here I will only lose um, 100 and, well, 120,000 Kenya shillings. So, um, so the bank is very quick to say, go ahead and, and, and do it, because this stays value. So you will need also to think about repackaging value. And, and I think uh, Wangari mentioned about um, quantifying the value of that mediation. It needs to be quantified. Uh, whether it is um, a case of credit um, or it's a case of a bank uh, suing someone because of a breach of data um, agreement, but you need to provide some value to whatever you're mediating. So that like, for example, if someone was suing for compensation for 100 Kenya shillings, you're saying, I will come in and I will provide the mediation and sort out this matter, but I would require that you give me a 5%. You know, that makes a lot of sense. So, so for me, it is repackaging that value, but going through a, a collective channel. Um, and it's likely that this is going to provide even an opportunity to do a training uh, that allows all the, the major stakeholders and the people that interact with the customers, either it's customer service or it's the legal team, to be able to respond to your matters and see what is the value that you're bringing on board. Okay. I hope I've responded to that matter adequately. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you have given us some very good tips to be able to think about. So uh, uh, we, we will be thinking about how to be able to approach the associations and uh, also thinking about, you know, how we present the value that uh, we as mediators can be able to to give to the banks and the bank's uh, uh, customers. Okay. Um, just uh, another question would be uh, just to ask, have you had any uh, direct mediation experience in the bank 
a matter that uh, you know in, involved you in the bank or any other that involved i know you have given us some examples in the in the presentation but perhaps you could share more of you know how was this experience for your colleagues who are also uh, bankers uh, did you actually involve an external mediator not you know someone within the banking system or the banking fraternity did you include uh, a mediator from from outside what was the the response of of uh, of, of the clients so just you could help okay. us just address yeah. that well i know there are so many uh, cases like that um i know you know, particular cases, not just within uh, here in Rafiki, but elsewhere where people have considered. And I think uh, that's what I was giving one of the examples where I have a friend, um, he had a loan facility, it was not paid for more than 90 days. Um, and the bank was insisting on selling his property in Nairobi. And um, so one day I told him, I want to accompany you to that discussion, the discussion with that bank to try and hear uh, what, what could be the solution. So when I sat with him and uh, you know his bankers, uh, you know the officials from the bank where he was banking, um, I provided a solution. I said, uh, "Why, well, why not consider a scenario where you've got your principal amount paid back, but then you you give this guy a rebate um, uh, on the penal interest? And penal interest is remember if you have a loan facility today and it is worth if the principal is one million." You are supposed to pay 200,000 within one year. You've not paid. The bank loads some penal interest. It's a penalty. So another could be another 100,000. So in this case, um, they agreed to give him a, a rebate on the penal interest, which was some significant amount of money. And uh, we walked out of the bank um, you know, with the solutions. One, he was supposed to, to have a direct transfer of the principal amount plus the some level of interest and some part of the penal interest uh, immediately, and which he did, and he was a happy customer because the bank released the facility. The, I mean, the the land that was was as a security, and today he's working free in the street. So, I for me, I have had that experience at a personal level, and I I can recount probably my colleagues and many other people have similar experiences. It's just that it is not structured; it is just. Uh, I, I forgot to invoice for that part of the, you know, providing a solution to both the bank and my friend. But it, it's, it is there, it's just that it might not be so structured. Um, but I also mentioned the, a particular instance where um, a bank had a customer, they used a photo of a customer without consent. And uh, the customer was filed for compensation in the courts. Uh, but then um, the customer agreed for mediation. Um, I, well, I'll call this, it's more of arbitration because um, the person who was mediating is, is a legal person and uh, provided uh, the loss that is incurred by the customer, the loss that is incurred by the bank, and why they need to come in the middle. And they agreed and the case was withdrawn from the courts. So it's, it's happening, but while the legal fraternity might structure it, I think mediators are not structuring this to a more of a commercial enterprise that can, can benefit them. So, so Mr. Siango, what you are saying is that, uh, you know, they've actually gotten in those instances, you know, called in uh, a, a qualified or, or so to say certified external mediator working as a mediator for the, you know, in the particular matter. And in which case, in that case, then who covered the costs? Of, of the mediator? It's the bank. The bank covers the costs of the mediator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Um, something else is uh, you did mention, uh, you did mention the things, you know, to, to be able to reach out to the association and to be able to provide value. I'm wondering, would there be any other events or any other uh, things that the bank does which would provide opportunities for mediators to get engaged or to be involved and to be able to showcase uh, whatever are their experiences? Okay. Um, um, I would still say that uh, banks are really so uh, careful about um, 
information and what they're doing and especially when it comes to customers so you will not you will not be so free to get opportunities for you know the bank giving you information and opportunities for you to come in you actually have to find a way of getting into into the banks and and i mean i see this with the the collectors the auctioneers um they create they come in and like i mentioned they have the value they show what the value is and it's a standard kind of um thing anyway but they will always come and approach the bank and, and remember in the banking sector you have to be enlisted to be in the panel so that tells you there is already a pre-qualification process uh, and for somebody who is do, taking you through a pre-qualification process most likely it's it's not a lot of information it's not something they want to share outside so we might not have so many open let me call them open days or open events that allow you to come in what is there is establish your value package your value bring the value banks will listen to your value and uh, thank you mr siengo wangari okay uh, zach uh, we uh, did receive um, a couple of comments from colleagues um, with yes. us and because we gave them a specific uh, we had a specific inquiry and um, the inquiry was uh, uh, one of them was uh, uh, kindly explain your views on whether Kenyan or Kenyan based banks are mediation ready and um, these are some of the now uh, comments we got as, uh, as some of the as part of the feedback and we will be able to share uh, that uh, as we summarize um, the discussions of this session as I've said uh, this is part of a very big discussion for us because even mm -hmm. the World Bank, the mediators are from Kenya are going to mediate there. So the, it was a uh, kindly explain your views on whether Kenyan or Kenyan-based banks are mediation ready. And um, so uh, we have a couple of comments. So someone says, okay, they need education um, to save time and money. Banks would be open to mediation. Uh, uh, yes, banks in Kenya are mediation ready since even they have been getting involved in dispute resolution at negotiation level. I'm not sure if they are ready. Mediation would be helpful. Uh, banks and their clients will be in a position to settle this dispute in an amicable way without involving the courts if banks were to opt for mediation. Uh, an interesting one, which I think is also something else that may be worth um, um, having discussions around and it also came about when we were having the discussions also uh, with uh, when you made the request to Mr. Nelson Courier, is that there's a lot of things that are not straightforward when it comes to money. So uh, a comment in terms of uh, most corruption issues involve money and banks uh, somehow get involved because they are the ones either who have received the money, they have transmitted the money. And so there's a lot of dispute that, in, um, that is around uh, such situations. Uh, then um, uh, there's a comment, being mediation ready will bring mutual uh, agreements and solutions to the loan burdens. Then uh, clients will be retained since mediation is a win-win if the banks are mediation ready. Um, an interesting comment also here, Kenyan banks are primarily subsidiaries of international conglomerates. So they serve the interests of non-local parties. Uh, that is um, also um, an interesting one and I think even as we're talking about our financial, inter, um, financial industry dispute resolution uh, uh, strategy team, this may be worth now checking because it may mean that you need to have uh, interactions with now either like the mother, uh, the mother uh, uh, organization. So there, there's a comment that is the best way to solve disputes. Uh, someone says that banks are not ready. I am a banker having worked in the industry for over 25 years and I know that banks like using lawyers so that is a comment from someone who has been a, um, a banker and that has been the experience. Um, the, someone else says that they need to create um, awareness. And I think this is an area that uh, mediator Sarah has, uh, Ater has also picked with, with you uh, in terms of how, where else can we, can, where do we uh, go through to be able to uh, create this awareness. Uh, Kenyan banks need to be sensitized on alternative dispute resolution. Uh, once this is done, then they will be more willing. Um, then um, there's a comment that uh, this would be a good, um, a good step. Um, then there's a comment from, uh, that says, so far I have not seen that they are mediation ready. Uh, uh, having approached one and queried, but they say they, ref they refer to their employees. 
Um, so I think this is part of, this is the area where we, where, uh, when we spoke um, earlier, we said that uh, the, the line between uh, customer service and uh, also there's an, um, an, a comment that um, uh, uh, banks or uh, institutions need to be made to understand the difference between human resource or HR and, uh, and mediation. So I think that, that comment also ties into that, that uh, when you say that, um, uh, uh, and even uh, from the discussion that you've been giving us, you have had uh, situations where you have been involved or someone else within the organization has been involved. So I, I believe that this comment also ties to that, uh, that um, organizations uh, choose to use their own employees, which again indicates we may need to explore why is that situation. And yet again also, when it comes to uh, uh, the, the parties such as the auctioneers, uh, valuers, you find that the banks will outsource for that service. But when it, can, when it comes to um, the, the, the persons to help to be able to understand each other better, it is not uh, right now a very obvious um, with, the, with, with the financial institutions. Uh, someone else says there's need for advocacy towards uh, this, the use of this alternative justice system and uh, so it can be embraced. Uh, someone else says that uh, litigation is time consuming and mediation is uh, a, a good practice, uh, that it will also give savings of time and money. And uh, also someone else says that it gives less stress and also builds on um, uh, the, the, the customer trust. So it may be interesting to hear from Zach in terms of, you know, uh, considering the design of the Kenyan banking sector and, and generally even the financial industries, uh, are banks really starved of customers? Are banks starved of trust? And when I talk about banks, I really probably it just means even um, in, uh, institutions generally. Uh, when it comes like to service, even when you go like into a supermarket, is the is a supermarket starved? You know, for you to really buy the omo from their shelf, or mm -hmm. they know that you, they, they, there's the next one coming. So I think also like in that situation, you know, would we be saying that Kenyan banks, you know? are falling over all, I mean, are falling or rolling over themselves so that they can be able to build the trust. Um, I think we have seen elements um, of this coming, especially like now when you now see things um, uh, or activities such as like corporate social responsibility, the financial industry is a very, very big uh, player. So uh, with that, I think, yeah, you can kindly uh, assist us with uh, just okay. from that summary, if you, uh, you can just give us also your your, your summary kindly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, yeah, yeah. so we, we go back to the question of banks already. And um, yeah, I would agree with some of the um, comments that um, um, banks see the value. They, they know there is value. Um, and, um, but that value has not been packaged by mediators to, to the doorsteps of banks, in my opinion. Um, so, then what happens is then the banks go to, through a process that they trust. I mean, you know, if you go to the court, then the court will declare, declare something at some point, and then it will be very easy to follow that particular process the way it has been structured, then you would want to go through that process. Uh, so if you ask me, um, one, um, um, it is, um, it's, it's a very close-knit uh, sector that requires that value to be taken to their doorsteps. It requires that value to be, to be packaged. And um, I mean, if you ask me, the only part that banks are not ready is the awareness aspect of it. It's not that they do not know there is value. There is value, the value is very clear, but the value needs to be packaged and taken to their doorsteps. And then what one of the, and I mentioned earlier that one of the ways you can do it is to ensure um, you create awareness through the right touch point, the legal team um, or um, the customer service team. Um, if you realize that banking is a trust, it's a trust environment. So they want to work with someone they can trust, a process they can trust, a, you, know, a, you know, ways they trust and the way things are done, there has to be trust. Um, and, 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 and there's a question also here, someone asking um, would the legal team uh, be open to, you know, they are more of a competition. Remember, the guy who is in the bank right now as the head of legal is an employee of the bank. He wants, in fact, he's, he's, if you look at the KPIs, the, what we call uh, the, um, the key performance indicators for that guy is to, to show how many items were sorted out or was, were resolved 
during a particular, let's say, three months or one year. So you'd be very excited to see a lot of these matters being taken off his shelf. And, uh, and so it's not more of competition. It will be competition to the, um, the guys who are practicing, practicing legal services outside, because obviously you're coming into their space, you're eating into their space. But for the bank, it is actually a solution to a problem and to a burden that uh, the legal guy doesn't want to have. So they will be willing to support. Uh, what I, again, if you allow me, I would go back to say, package this value. Um, bring in what is, what is the value to the bank. Um, and it will be very easy to understand. Bring in also what exactly do you want from being part of this process. Then attack this issue through uh, a common point, uh, the associations and then it will be possible to get into the banking space and create value for, for yourselves and the work that you're doing. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Huh? Uh, thank you, uh, Sarah, kindly, just before um, we, I know we, we get into um, uh, wrapping on this, Zach, I really, really once again would like to thank you because um, the, those, inquir those comments or inquiries by the colleagues yeah. uh, and, and, and your you're, you're very uh, simplified and uh, uh, very deep uh, communication is simply one, 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 let me say I can put it in one, one statement. Understand this client, then be able to put forth the value proposition. Yeah. And mediation will be rolling within the banking sector. I think if those are three sentences that can be put into one, that's really what I've heard from you. And uh, I'm delighted that the strategy team has, let me say they have enough flour. Now they can go and put it together uh, into um, a, 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 a great cake or a great, um, into a, in a great way that we can be able to have now uh, a strategy to enable us to journey together with the partners and the stakeholders within the financial industry, not only in Kenya because mediation is across um, internationally and other countries, also have mediators who are serving in the banks and also other financial institutions. So Zach, uh, thank you for that comment. And mm. most of all, what I've heard from you is that banking runs on trust. Yeah. Trust is yeah. a major uh, element when, or it, it, it's something that a fruit of mediation or it can be uh, a fruit out of a mediation process. So once again, thank you. And uh, back to you, Mediator Sarah, kindly. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, just before you wrap up, I, I think uh, there's a comment that Wangari brought up and um, it ties to what Lawi Wambare had asked about uh, the legal team. Um, yes, I would like to agree with uh, there's a comment about uh, the HR and the mediation. How do you, you, do you perceive the two? And I would like to say the HR, you know, the, the team in the bank is actually an employee of the bank. So, so for them, it's... Um, give them the value, Tell, show them what you're coming in to do, and they wouldn't see it as a competition. I think that I, I thought it's good for me to clarify on that matter because Wangari you had mentioned. And then Wangari, there's something I'd mentioned about the international and non-local. The banking sector here today is, um, who are the, the largest players? Uh, I'd like to ask Wangari, who are the largest players? <laughs> uh, I know, I, KCB in terms uh -huh. of, uh, I, I'd probably say branches. Okay, now you yeah, yeah. well. So, so and, 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 and it's Kenya. And when I, and when I say that, I think it's, it's yeah, where shares, government shares, uh, yes. public, uh, public has shares, and they yeah. actually even bought National Bank. Yeah. So they are a big girl and big boy. <laughs> exactly, thank you. So yeah. the, the comment about the banks uh, having the international uh, shareholding and sometimes limiting their the ability to make decisions, um, think about who is the number one. The number one is KCB. Number two is Equity Bank. Number three, I think right now is NCBA. All those guys are local. They are owned by local uh, guys and, the, and they, well, they, the only thing is we are using international standards because there's a lot of dictation of what's happening internationally and we, we have to appreciate uh, international standards, but they are local guys. So it will be interesting to find out that it's actually very possible to, 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 to come in and, um, and influence decision making and policy making in the country because a lot of the leading guys are also local. So I thought, I thought it's good for me to mention that, uh, Wangari, as you, I mean, Wangari and uh, Sarah, as you, you wind up. Okay, thank you.
Yes, um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Siengo. We really appreciate uh, the time that you have spent with us and uh, being able to uh, help us mediators have our eyes opened. So uh, clearly the challenge that uh, you have given to us is that we need to be able to work together, we need to be able to package ourselves properly, and we need to be able to approach the association. And I like the final encouragement where you tell us that these are actually locals like ourselves. So uh, we can actually be able to make headway uh, with them. Uh, we, are, we are grateful for the time that uh, we have spent. You have been able to share with us uh, the insight and the knowledge, I'm sure it is not enough, not just for me, but for many of us. Uh, so I think we we'll probably will be having you uh, come to speak to us again and uh, giving us advice from time to time. Uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of uh, our session uh, this afternoon. Uh, we have been having uh, our speaker, uh, Mr. Zach uh, Siengo, uh, Mr. Zach Siengo is the Head of Marketing and Corporate Affairs at uh, Rafiki Microfinance Bank and he has been able to speak to us uh, today about opportunities uh, within the banking sector and give us some insights and uh, things to be able to think through uh, and use as mediators to be able to uh, uh, enter the banking uh, sector. Uh, we have come uh, to the close of the session uh, this afternoon. Uh, we will close uh, by being able to recite the words of the national anthem in English and then we will have concluded. O oh God of all creation, is this our land and nation? Justice be chilled and defender, may we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Thank you very much, Mr. Siengo. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening. Good evening. Bye.